Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'd like to discuss magnetic cables and try and figure out if these products are gimmicks or game changers. And I'll give you a little background on how this conversation started because I work with a bunch of nerds here at Drone Valley and they're constantly buying new products and testing new products and we work with manufacturers that are designing new products and somebody will bring something into the shop and start bragging about it. And then the rest of us look at it and go, all right, that's kind of cool, but does it really do what they say it can do? Does it change your life? Is there really a feature in that product that's important enough for me to invest in it? And with magnetic cables, this whole conversation started a couple of years ago, and it really started with this cable. This was the first type of cable released that involved electronics and magnetics in a product. And the cable was pretty simple. On the one end, there was a USB connection that plugged into a charger. It could have been a USB-A or a USB-C. And on the other end, there was nothing except a high-powered magnet and a group of contacts inside. And the way this worked is you'd plug this into a charger, and it came with three tips typically an Apple, a micro USB, and a USB-C. Those can vary a lot between manufacturers, but they all work pretty much the same. There were magnets in both parts of this, and once you brought the cable close to that connector, boop, it connected up, and it started charging your phone, your tablet, whatever you've got plugged into. So it's basically a charger cable that you could disconnect the end by unplugging it like this, poop, pull it off like that, and then move it to another product. So when we started testing it, I thought, well, that's kind of a cool thing, but for me, I don't care about cool, I care about value. So if the product did something different, made it a little easier, or was a little bit more flexible, maybe it's something I'm interested in. So we started testing this quite a bit. Now, initially my first concern was, okay, it's a charging cable. What kind of charging can I do with this cable? Well, it turns out after we've tested, I don't know, 40 of them at this point, that a cable like this that has a magnetic end on it, and there's a lot of different variations out there. Some of the companies now have lights on the end that you can find the cable and pop the thing on. Some have a, sort of an elbow on the end that can turn 90 degrees either way. We couldn't find a single cable that would fast charge, that could carry a lot of current. All the cables we tested, kind of cool that it pops on like that, just get it close and it sticks. But these cables are limited to a five volt maximum of 2.4 amps of current, which means if you're trying to charge something like a big tablet or drone batteries, or heaven forbid a laptop, there's no way you're gonna be able to charge it in less than a week. It's just not gonna carry enough current. So if I could have found one of these that did 60 watts or 100 watts that had the magnetics on the end, okay, maybe it would have made sense to me. The other challenge with a cable like this is that typically a cable can charge a device and can also do data transfer. So if you're moving files from your computer to a thumb drive or something external, or maybe you're connecting your phone up to your computer and you gotta move files around, the cable should be able to do that. These cables don't do data transfer. All they do is charge. So what you've got here is a really basic USB charging cable that's got this magnetic tip on the end. And I thought, okay, it's still kind of cool. So is that something I care about? Well, after we tested it a little bit longer, and I'm gonna show you something in a second. This is a a measuring device for magnetics. So it measures Gauss, which is the metric you use for magnetics. I thought, let me see what the magnetic pattern looks like on the end of this, because I wanna be sure that if I bring this with me in my bag, and I've got memory cards in there and all kinds of high-powered electronics, so this shows you exactly what the magnetic pattern looks like on this particular device, and you can see it's pretty strong. Looking at that right there, it's about 500, 500 gauss in that range, which is a pretty strong magnet, and it would kind of have to be to hold that end on there and actually attract it that far away. Look how far away that is, and it still finds its own position. So, all right, so I've got magnetics now that I'm a little bit worried about because it's really powerful, but then at the end of the day, what I found was, this is a USB-C connection right here. If I plug this into my tablet and I disconnect the cable, well, what if I want to charge another USB-C device? Well, the end of it is stuck in my tablet I need another end and it only comes with one USB-C. Now I can buy extra connectors, but then I'm moving the cable from here to the next one to the next one. And I guess if you had an Apple product, a micro USB product and a USB-C product, maybe you could move between them. But you know, it seemed like I'm leaving the tip in the, in the product and the only thing I can charge is that. And really, what is that saving me? This connection, what is that, a quarter of a second? So right away, I'm starting to think pretty gimmicky. Then I started thinking about it more and we did more testing. I'm really, really worried that it isn't just a magnet in here, there are magnets in these ends as well. Watch this. Look, I'm repelling that magnet. Look, it's pushing it across the desk. So these magnets in here have a level of attraction that stick together. 
Imagine if you swallowed that or somebody swallowed that. That is a huge hazard for people when it's laying around the house and a kid picks it up and swallows it or, or somehow it inadvertently goes in your mouth and you swallow it. I don't know what you'd be doing to do that, but now I got a choking hazard. It gets, you know, gets into your intestines. Like that's, that was to me the final straw. So in this particular circumstance, I immediately looked at it after we tested all the different things we tested, I talked about and I thought it's got magnetics, which could interfere with electronics. It doesn't really save me much time plugging things in. It's got an issue with choking hazard because I've got these small pieces on the end. And again, the other thing is once this is in a charger, all those connections on the end are exposed. Same thing here. If you leave this in your phone, all the connections on the bottom of that are exposed. So now you've got electrical potential outside the device and outside the cable. So for me, I looked at this and I said gimmick with a capital G. I just thought to myself, there's no value for me in this type of cable. It doesn't save me time. It puts me a little bit more at risk, and it's just not something I can invest in. So we passed on that. Well, in the last year or so, another type of magnetic cable came out that coils itself, which I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Is that something I can really use? Is that something I really care about? And these are magnetic, and the way they do this, and I'll show you in a second with the, uh, the Gaussian detector here, the radiation pattern on this is the companies have figured out, and there's a couple of different ways they do this. They can either put magnetic strips inside the cable, and then, you know, magnetize it with different polarities. So they've got one as a North Pole, one as a South Pole, and they attract each other when you coil it up. So kind of a cool thing. But then I thought to myself, what about the magnetics on this one? Like if this is in my bag, uh, is it going to erase things in my bag? So again, if I look at the pattern on this, what you'll see pretty quickly, and it's clever, is that they've got a positive and a negative next to each other strips. And there's a couple of different ways they can make these, these cables. Now, the first ones we tested, had physical strips inside of it, which again, I felt like even though it's metal, it's not flexible enough. So if I start bending this all the time, are those magnetic strips gonna break inside? Um, you know, I didn't like that so much. Now we started working with a manufacturer because I, I saw this and I went, you know what? If this cable can conduct enough current to fast charge things and it's PD compatible and I can do data transfers over it, it's not like this cable is gonna change my life, but compared to a standard 60 watt charging cable that can transfer data as well, I kind of like the magnetics on this. I kind of think it's cool that I can spread it out and I can recoil it like this really quickly, throw it in my bag and it's gonna to stay together. I think that's pretty neat. So I looked at it and I said, you know what? I, I do find a little value in this. I don't think it's a game changer, but I think it's gonna give me the ability to keep things neat in my bag. When I throw, I got four or five cables with me, I throw them into my bag. Even if I wrap them up nice and neat, by the time I get to my destination and I go back in my bag, it's like they're having a party in there where all the cables are moving around and I've got a big rat's nest of cables. So for me, this makes things a lot simpler. So I like that. But then we sat down and said, all right, all the ones we're testing at this point, they're not PD, they're low power, and they don't do data transfer. That was the initial. This is going back six months or nine months. So we started working with the manufacturer and said, could we build a cable that's what I'll call a medium duty cable that'll carry 60 watts of power, that's PD 3.0, because I want to quick charge devices with it, and it can do data transfer, and that's what we came up with. So this cable right here doesn't use the metal strips. It actually uses a different technology inside. So it's different than a lot of the ones on the market. And it actually coils up really nicely. But this cable will do 60 watts of current or 60 watts of power through it, which means it's perfect for medium to small size drones, large tablets, game consoles, your phone, whatever it happens to be. It's also PD 3.0. So if you've got a device that uses power delivery charging, these cables are PD 3.0 compliant. And the data transfer was important to me as well because I needed something that could move a lot of data quickly through a USB-C connection, 480 megabits. So it's a fast transfer as well. Now the cable itself is heavier than a standard cable and it lays nice and flat, which I like an awful lot. It doesn't curl up like a lot of the cables and it's got a little bit of weight to it. And I like that having a little bit extra weight to the cable, but you'll notice on the cable, it's USB-C to USB-C. So then we started thinking about it. Well, okay, USB-C is the latest standard on chargers. It's the latest standard on most portable electronics, drones, tablets, phones, even the Apple products are moving to USB-C. So it's perfect if you have a newer charger that uses a USB-C port and you've got a newer device that uses a USB-C connection on that device. But what if you've got something else? What if you've got an older Apple product or you've got a micro USB product from all those years ago? Or what if you've got an older charger that uses USB-A? So we came up with a set of adapters that help you out. So I've got one here that'll turn the USB-C into an Apple. So you can plug this into your charger and charge your Apple device. I've got another one here that'll turn it into a micro. So if you've got an older device that uses micro USB, plug it in, you can charge that device. 
And then I was thinking, well, what about the other end? That's USB-C. I can't plug that into a USB-A charger. So we added another connector to it that actually turns USB-C into USB-A. So you can plug this in on this end, and now you've got a USB-A connection here for the older chargers. You've got whatever you need on this end, one of the three flavors that are out there, and you can adapt it to whatever you need. So we thought about this a long time, and I said, you know what? I don't want to call this a gimmick, but I don't want to call it a game changer either, because essentially, it's a USB-C cable that's 60 watts, which is great, PD 3.0, which is great, and the fact that it can transfer data at 480 megabits a second, which is great. And it's got the magnetics built in. So when we designed this and work with the manufacturers to build this cable, all those things were important to me. And if you compare this to a lot of other magnetic cables on the market, you'll find that some of those features aren't available in those products. The other thing I will mention, this one, because it doesn't have as strong a magnetics because we did that on purpose, it's not gonna hold like a lot of them. You've probably seen commercials where people are sort of like, a, like an old slinky, pulling it apart and putting it back together. That's because they have really strong magnets in those cables, and that's what concerns me about this cable. So we designed this to have about a 350 Gaussian attraction, which is low enough where it's not gonna erase your memory cards, but still strong enough to hold the cable together. I think it's a happy medium between the two. So again, whenever we decide to build a product, and we've been working on this one for a little while, we always sit down and try to say, what can we do better than the products that are on the market? And more importantly, how can we build a product that we'll use on a regular basis that's fairly universal and incredibly easy to use? And that's what we put together with this product. So again, these are on the market. You can find a lot of different places. Our version of this product is available on our website. It's available on Amazon. And I'm not here to sell you cables, but when we looked at this one, I said, it's not something I want to get involved with as a team. We're going to leave this one alone. There's a lot of companies that sell this. If you're using this, I'd love to hear from you what your experience is with this type of cable. Because to me, I just looked at that and thought, it's not something I can get behind. The magnetics in the actual cable itself, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. It's not a game changer, but it's kind of cool. I think what makes this a game changer is the universal uh, aspects of it. The fact that it's heavy duty, 60 watts, 480 megabits a second of uh, data transfer, and it's PD 3.0. You can add the connectors to it, and you've got a cable that you can use pretty much anywhere. So it's like universal plumbing in that respect. Anyway, that's it. So we're offering the cable either singly or as a pair. We're also offering the adapters as an add-on or with the cable. You can decide, you know, on the website, you can get them a couple of different ways. But anyway, that's our, that's our two cents on it. For me, if I have to rate the two, gimmick with a capital G, I don't want to say gimmick with a small g, but but useful, but not a game changer. So somewhere in between the two. Um, I just think it's uh, it's an interesting side note to have a cable that automatically wraps itself up and holds its form when you throw it in your bag. And that's all I really had for today. So again, I hope I answered some questions out there. I'd love to hear about your experience, though. If you have this one, let me know in the comments below. And if you've got a version of this one, drop those in the comments below as well, because we're always looking for new products. We're always trying to develop things that make our lives a little bit easier and add some value. And I think with this product, it's a, it's a minor upgrade over a standard cable, but the fact that you can use a 60 watt charger and get full 60 watts through it, PD 3.0, which is compatible with all the new devices that are out there, and the data transfer is important as well. You won't get any of that over here. And that's pretty much it for today. So if you're interested, I've got links below for these. I appreciate you guys watching. I've got so much more content coming. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button down there and join the Drone Valley family. Because again, we've got so much cool stuff coming that you're going to want to hear about. And that's all I had for today. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, as always, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.